So it's been a while since I've done any streaming at all. Uh, been very busy with some traveling. And then, of course, for those that are our ZBrush users, we have P2 that came out. I'm going to adjust my webcam a little bit because I think it got knocked. So bear with me for one moment, please. I got I knocked I knocked the table a, a little bit. So I'm just going to do there. Bob Ross adjustments. It's got to be done. There. There we go. All right. That's much better. Much better for you guys. So, um you know, we talked because of just my traveling and then we've been working on the P2 and everything else. I didn't um I'm going to veer off from what I normally do, actually, and I'm going to work on my mech guy here a little bit, and I want to, in essence, highlight some things that we've been talking about over these months uh, of us uh, having the Did You Know That? So I want to kind of rebuild, build some pieces here and show kind of the step, because I'm pretty happy design-wise, the initial design of him, where he's at. So I want to start now building out these pieces and making them clean like these. So these are these are very clean in the sense that they're low polygon, right? So by me turning on the dynamic, you know, I can start seeing where I'm going with this. So I can see where I need to get creasing, where I want to keep the creasing, not keep the creasing. So obviously I'm not liking what's happening in here. So I would want to keep um, some creasing there. So I want to take the time today and start taking some of these shapes in these pieces and play with them a little bit um, and go through the process of what I would do now for my next stage. Because again, this is this was just a simple initial mock-up for me for using uh, Dynamesh. And it's the mode I like to call the, the Dino Sketch mode where I'm just throwing pieces at it, manipulating, changing them. Uh, I'm maintaining the poly groups. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a lot of the Z modeler today so I can come in here and start, you know, cleaning up these edges. So, and let's take, um, as you, as, as always, as we're going through this, we can take any questions that you might have um, as we're rocking and rolling through this. So you can see this is the shape maybe that I'm going for, more for this. And then, again, the thing I want to reiterate, when you're going to play low polygon, and do this it's really important too about your edges the way they're going okay what I mean by that is there this is extremely sharp it's like over the top sharp again engineering wise it really wouldn't be possible to get it that perfection of a sharp okay so I'm reading one of the questions how do you get p2 here I'll show you so there's multiple ways that you can look at getting p2 all right, so if you already have P1, okay, you go here to plugins, all right, and then you can go to, in here, you want to look for your uh, uh, updates. So you could go into, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it should be in the view the update log, wait, I... in here and then actually the best way that I like to do it is going right within the folder the best way to do it is going in your folder here for your program files going in the pixel logic 4r8 and you can just run this right here the Z upgrader if you just run that then that'll find that there's a new update and then it'll see that there's a P2, and then you go through that process. So it's the same on Windows and Mac. Um, however, if you're running 4R8 um, on Sierra, um, for some reason the change that has been done on Sierra affected the original version um, of 4R8, so that upgrader won't work with Sierra. So we made a special one so in the post here and this is only for you those that are working on with just 4r8 not 4r8 p1 if you have 4r8 p1 you're fine you can do it the way i just showed it for the z upgrader um in here okay 
you would download this if you're trying to upgrade from 4R8 to 4R8P2 on Mac Sierra only. Okay, other than that, everyone else can go through that upgrader that I showed. Okay, hey, you know, and with that said, before we, we dive in, something else that I want to highlight is our handy dandy wonderful ZBrush Summit. So in case that those that do not know, we have now uh, I've put up everything except there's one thing left that we have to put up and that's portfolio reviews. Okay, so we now have our workshops are live. So these are workshops that um, you can take here. So they're $200 for a four-hour workshop. So you can see Shane's is pretty much almost sold out. There's only five seats left. Um, Seth is from Blizzard Entertainment. He's the actual supervisor um, there for the cinematic teams and environments. So he's going to show all of his workflows in there. We have Furio Tedadishi. So obviously, I'm sorry, for I always butcher your last name. Um, Hard Surface King of ZBrush. So he's doing a workshop. Dan Ketcher who actually does the dragons for Game of Thrones. He's gonna show his workflow of how he does the dragons for the Game of Thrones. Then you've got Michael Clymer. Whoops, it's bouncing around on me. Michael Clymer does the weapons. Um, so he's done stuff for, um, well, the division. He did a lot of the weapons there and now he's been at Bungie for a couple of years. So he worked on the weapons um, there. And then there's Jared Koshevsky and he's really gonna show his pipeline workflow for concepting and how at Aaron Sims company, how he uses ZBrush and then uses it with Photoshop or ZBrush with some key shot and Photoshop. And he's really gonna show that. So Furio, all these people will be physically here. So you wanna get on these because we just made these live. Um, a couple days ago and you can see they're already selling pretty good so you want to go to that then the live sculpt off contestants have also been announced so these are all of our contestants on the organic side so Damien Caldera who was the inventor of the Dame standard brush is actually going to be here at the summit and he's also making a presentation so we've got another really great lineup of some amazing artists coming for the sculpt off so these are all the organic side and then our hard surface sides right here so of course furio is coming to defend his two-time title okay and then you got everyone else here so david schultz works at red storm you got chi who's be is just another one of those i would say hard surface masters in zbrush so he's competing and he's also making a presentation um so Michael Clymer's competing, and there's a lot of great Timothy, who, Tim, you guys all know, for those that are regular people tuning in, he's actually going to compete in the Sculpt Off, so it's going to be another fun year, so this has all now been updated, um, if you want, you could register, so if I go to the home page, any changes or things that we do or update, you guys, if you want to register, okay, you can register right here, and then you'll get all the updates. Um, about the summit because what the only thing we have not launched yet and announced is we are going to do portfolio reviews this year. So I, I don't mean e us as in Pixelogic. I mean several of our presenters that work at studios are going to sit and look at the artwork if you're trying to get a job at those studios. Um, and we're going to have that scheduled off. So we're creating a whole system that you'll be able to log on and schedule your time with those particular studios. Okay. So. I wanted to highlight that. And then also remember the sculpt off this year. It's got its own day on Thursday and it's only online. So it's nothing going on physically at location. Nothing's physically happening on site until the next day, which is Friday the 6th. Excuse me. And then through the 8th of the Sunday. So, but the sculpt off, we're going to give it its own day this year and see how that goes. Okay. So I wanted to take a minute to highlight that. So any other questions before we move on that I missed here? I don't know. Okay, yeah, so good good, uh, good call. Yeah, make sure firewall and an antivirus okay, also could stop the installation of ZBrush or the updating of ZBrush. Everything is streamed live at the summit except the workshops. We do not stream the workshops. You have to be physically here on site, and that's the only thing we charge for. Everything else is free. 
Um, so as far as what's new in P2, it's it's really just it's fixes um, based upon feedback that you guys have given us. So here I'll I'll show that to you here. So in this post right here. We're, we put right here what we fix. So for example, now the live booleans, you can see masking and dimming. Um, we fixed a, a bunch of different brushes. We've added some things based upon customer feedback. So like now the dynamic mode and the brush size can be saved out on an individual brush basis now. Um, we did some other updating and fixes to the 3D print hub. Um, we brought back the transpose line inflate and clipping because that was a request a lot of people depended on it. So we brought all that back and we just fixed some stuff. So this is everything that was done in patch two and then this is everything that was done in patch one. So it's more of just some fixes and updates to existing features. There's nothing new that's been added to ZBrush. Okay. Yeah, Keyshot is a separate thing that you have to purchase. For sure. Okay, so I want to play, have some fun playing with you guys today, and just looking at this model mech that I've been that I'm going to work on, and my goal is here to get this done, and hopefully you guys will see the process and the streaming as we go along here. So the big thing for me, if I'm going to be trying to switch any of this uh, Dynamesh pieces, and I want to clean them up, I'm going to use different ways to do it, and when I'm cleaning them up, I'm a big component of for me personally doing the low polygon so I can have Z modeler at my disposal and do some things with it and then I really found a great workflow for myself so with the dynamic subdiv I find turning my smooth subdiv to four and this creasing level here putting it at two gives a very nice automatic kind of chamfering roundness to the edges. So you can see in this particular piece, now I've got some roundness there. So now if I crank this up a little bit more, it'll get more and more smooth. And you can see what that's what that piece would look like. Reminiscent. So you can see in here, if I want to play with this edging still, I can do that. So I can increase it and then see what does that look like. Right? So I can start saying, well, I want to crease it back and see what that looks like. So I just found for me, it creates a very nice way to manipulate the surface and look at what I want to do with it. Okay. So that's kind of like my go-to setting. So I, I want to have some fun with this piece in the back here today. So I kind of want to build this out and build this up. Okay and look at it, some other pieces in here and then maybe take this piece and it's something that I kind of have uh, a certain flow to and then go for it. No, no no pull today. I'm just going to play around and sculpt today. So no pull today. When I get back in the swing of things, I'm also going to be gone for vacation. Um, the last pull we did, it was advanced materials that took the win. So that's the one we're going to do once I get back. But today, I, I just wanted to play. I wanted to switch gears for me and do a little sculpting fun and then just have you guys watch. So this is my workflow of using uh, Dynamesh, okay, and using it with the groups option turned on. Because, again, the benefit to me with this is if I start inserting and say, oh, I want to put some kind of piece here, right uh, that's not what I wanted right so we can switch to the gizmo right I can position this and say do I want that that's actually not that bad it's not that bad happy mistake there okay so what's nice obviously new is if I'm in gizmo mode I can say actually what I want is a cube right and then it swaps out and gives me that cube so I can switch to any one of these pieces and because I have the gizmo turned on, on this IMM brush, no matter what I click, that's what gets replaced. If I don't have the gizmo on, then that's just selecting the next piece that I want to draw out. So you can see nothing, nothing's changing. It's just now me selecting the same piece. It's just like if I hit the M key right now, this is the old way to select insert mesh brushes, which you can still use. We didn't take away. So again, that's hitting the M as in Marvel as in magnificent, as in micro mesh. Okay, so 
But with the gizmo on, we've now added with this selector, IMM selector, I can swap these out. Okay. So when I drew this out, all right, I've got it drawn on this one subtool. So if you look, I've only got five subtools to this guy. I've separated out some pieces just because that's what I wanted to do to keep them kind of separated and have their own subtool. But the majority of him you can see is all in one subtool. Now the beauty here is I'm kind of doing by turning the groups on, when I go to redynamesh this, it's keeping them one subtool, but then it's keeping this as its own kind of piece. So it's got its own shell. So it's not welding in there. So it allows me to do at any time, I can click on it and I can move it still, right? I can adjust and say, I want to adjust the size of this. And you see how they're moving to the center? So right now you guys can't see what my hands are doing and that's half the fun right now. So it's moving towards the center. So what's controlling that is I'm in symmetry mode, right? So in, in essence, I have two gizmos. I have one here and I got one sitting over here and ZBrush knows that. So when I start changing this size, it's changing it based on the world scale, which is in this middle section right here. So what I want to do is throw this L sim on, okay? And then I want to center now. So you can see this is now centered to this cube and then now I can change the size of this and you can see it, they're not moving towards the center. So that L sim is very important, especially when you start doing all the sauce. Okay, I'm just reading Red Hot's question. Every time I start my ZBrush, my preloaded. It's like a standard brush, unless I reset the brush, however, it's tedious to do it. Um, uh, Red Hot's, where did you put the brush? Where did you store it? What folder? Um, Lark Arts? No, that's not new. Well, the gizmo's new to 4R8, but this local sim thing I'm doing is not new. That's been there for years. So as you're in the Z starts, startup, okay. Are you in, uh, uh, P2? Are you in 4R8 P2 and it's doing it to you? Red Hots? Um, if you want to, you can send me the brush and I can take a look. So send it to streaming at pixelogic.com and then I can take a look. And send me in that email, hey, this is what's supposed to be turned on on the brushes. This is what it's supposed to do to the surface. And that way I know what it's supposed to be doing. Okay? Um, but if you're not at P2, I would say update the P2 because that might be what the problem is. Because we've changed some things back, we reverted back th some things to the brush system to the way it was in 4 or 7 in previous versions based on your f feedback. So that's kind of the things we've done in P2. So if you're not in P2 Red Hots, I would try that first. Okay, so <clears throat> on to this. So this workflow really allows me to, you know, play with this and figure this out, you know, and say, mm, I'd want it to have kind of maybe that look to it, right? And I can say, mm, what if I doubled it? Right, and then I can say that's that's happening on the back there. I, I kind of liken it, okay? So this is this is what I like about this workflow. I'm not what I like to call married to the design yet, because I'm just figuring it out and manipulating my service and figuring out what are where I'm going, what I'm doing with this, right? So because I have this groups on, I still have all these pieces separately. So now what I'm going to do is my next step. So this is phase one, is the design phase, figuring out, you know, and then it helps me figure out the proportions of my Mac, you know, looking at the arms, does, is there full movement there? Does it make sense, right? Does he have full arm movement? Does, does his elbows have movement? Do I, right now, if you look, my elbows really only have this. Do I need this? Do I, well, you guys can't even see my, I'm doing like robotic stuff down below and you guys can't even see it. So I mean, uh, I have only this movement, right? In the elbow. Do I want this movement where I'm turning the wrist in essence or the forearm movement kind of a thing? Do I want all that? That's what I'm trying to figure out in this stage. Okay, before I go to what I could call now stage two, which is my cleanup stage. Okay, so I'm in the design stage right now, and I want to show you guys my process for cleanup stage and what I like to do for cleaning up things. Okay. Um, Doug, you should get an email. I'd have to double check with the team, but emails 
um, are still going out. Um, I'd have to see with uh, the team on that side and see if make sure that the emails all did go out. But also double check, um, Doug, because you're you're a, um, an avid ZBrusher, so you're in all the streams and stuff. Make sure that the email didn't get sent to like your junk or your spam because you're getting so many emails from the Pixelogic domain. So double check that too. Okay, so let's look at this process okay so here we have is they're all one sub tool and I want to now start cleaning up pieces okay so what I'm gonna do is let's look at how I would clean up maybe something like this it's got very different type of angles to it so this is where I go okay this piece I want to do some cleanup with this so I'm gonna just actually split this off so we're only looking at this piece okay so as far as retopologizing goes, there is many ways we can go about doing this, okay? So the one way I like to do, for in particular with this piece, is I wanna keep it as low as I possibly can, okay? So let's turn everything off, and if you guys don't know, for um, R8, you can see that all the other subtools are not turning off, even though I have this selected and turning the eyeball on and off. Because we obviously, again, user feedback, people would automatically click on this accidentally. And now with live booleans with the, the start menus, we have changed this now. If you hold the shift key and click, it turns off all other subtools. So again, you can now hold the shift key and click, and then it'll turn off all other subtools. All right. So I want to retopologize this one piece. Okay. And I can retopologize both at the same time or do whatever I want. So. I prefer, because this is going to stay really low polygon, and it's pretty much all quads. It's not anything crazy going on here, okay? We could do something either A, I could do the topology brush, right? And then I can draw lines, and wherever the lines are crossing, right, that's a face that's going to start to be created. So i got to make sure I get line crosses. So you can see... I need to manipulate and play with this and you can see my hands not perfectly straight there is ways obviously to clean that up but I'm not liking the results that I'm getting right so this isn't crossed over here so we'll make sure we're crossing over and now you see I got a face okay but it's really dependent on how I'm drawing this out right so I got to do this and then continue down the path. So you can see my brush is red. Now I'm on the curve and it's blue. That means I can engage the curve so I can extend the curve that way. Okay, but you can clearly see you got a nice straight line here because wherever the green circles are, those are vertex points now and then that's creating a polygon face. So that's why I'm getting the face. Okay, so this is definitely one way to go about it. I'm gonna go the different route because it's just something I prefer for a shape like this. And I'm going to use the Z spheres. Okay, so you can retopologize again two different ways with the Z sphere. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Z sphere and I'm going to go down my menu line here. I'm going to say rigging. I'm going to say select mesh. And I'm going to select this piece and it pops into place. And now I've got this. And then I'm going to go to edit topology and turn that on. So now I have this piece. We'll turn the floor off because we don't need it. And in fact, I'm going to make my draw size all the way down to 1 because that's all I need. Do I want symmetry on or off, right? So again, in the transform, do I want this on or off? The shortcut being X. Okay. So now all I'm doing is just tapping where I want vertex points to go. And now the only thing I'm really relying on the surface is, is where the, the point goes. Nothing else. I'm not, where the topology brush is taking on the curvature of the surface and things like that, I'm not doing that with this. So I'm just literally saying I want to point there, I want to point there, and then let's go from here to here. So i am just got to build out the rest of this piece. And notice, when you guys either double click in the document, or if you start rotating at least twice, so I'm using right click rotation, right? It deselects the vertex point. All I have to do is tap, and now that point right there is the selected point. And then I say I want to build from there to here. And you can see now it shoots back because now this polygon face is done. Okay, and what I'm going to start to use now is this adaptive skin. So this is really important. Oh, yeah.
Lisa needs braces moment all at the same time. Okay? So, <clears throat> what's new to 4R8 is we've now put Dynamesh in adaptive skin. And by default, we're turning Dynamesh on. So, if you guys have ever used Dynamesh, you know there's cardinal rules to Dynamesh. Okay? Number one being, it's got to be a watertight surface. So what I'm building right now at this point is not watertight because I've only drawn out four faces. So it's just a plane, a plane, and a plane, and a plane. That's not watertight. Okay. And then number two is Dynamesh on plane surfaces. It's not meant for that. Okay. So I'm actually not going to use Dynamesh resolution because I know it's not going to give me the result I'm looking for. I'm going to turn this off and I'm also going to turn my density here to one. So this density slider in essence is the number of subdivision levels that I want to have by default when I look at this mesh. Because what I'm going to do is preview and give me my results. And you can see we are getting exactly what I'm drawing out now. Right? Because this is what I'm trying to make. If I turn the density up, then it shows me what it would look like divided. Right? So this shows density of three. It doesn't show me three subdivision levels. Okay, so I'm going to drop this back down the one, turn off the preview, and then I'm going to continue now to build this surface out. So I'm back in draw mode. I'm going to say, all right, I need a point there. We'll go there to there, turn around, and I'm just now following the design that I've laid out and just rebuilding new geometry. So I need to cut across from there to there. And then now let me finish off the bottom. So I'm going to go from there to there. Okay, and then I can say, well, what am I looking like so far? This is what I have. Okay, so you see this issue right here? So I know when people use this, they run into something like this. Okay, because there is something with this. This is really old, right? So what it's going to need is everything is perfectly four faces. So when it's trying to calculate, it's having a problem with seeing kind of like a non-manifolded surface. Paul Dipipiat. Well, I'm just reading uh, Vertigo's uh, hashtag. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a span of geometry. And what this is also highlighting, you can see there's a yellow line that's popping up. This is how I am able to, when I click here, see that yellow line? That's where this point's going to fall. And then that's where I move, start moving around the surface and going from here to here. And then we'll go from here to here and then finish off there. And now we can say A. And see, just doing that, we get the piece that I want. The piece, what is this doll? Right, so it's just something when you are using this, if everything is like four, four perfect, like polygon by polygon, and there's no split edges, you might run into what I just ran into. But the easy thing to do is to just add an edge loop around there. Right? And so we have Z modeler, so I can delete that really easy with one click. So I'm going to say, okay, let's make this a skin. Okay, so I click this button, and you see what it does is it makes a new tool. Okay? You actually, the hashtag could be hashtag Paul's a tool, because I am a tool. So now I'm going to go back to my original mech that I was working on here, and I'm going to say now let's append. Okay? that piece now. So I'm looking at the skin and now I have this skin here and I can turn these on and off and then there you go. So now I would take the time to switch to my Z modeler and let's, you know what, I don't, right now let's just get rid of that piece and let's decide about some polygrouping. Okay, so what do I want? Maybe that to be its own polygroup, right? So maybe this. So I can make these old, their own polygroup, right? So I'm just holding the Alt key to get the white temporary polygroup, right? So I'm going to say, uh, let's make this the same polygroup. Let's say that. And then this side as well, have that polygroup. Okay, the back can have the green. The bottom can have a different polygroup. And then the front 
we'll have that be a different polygroup. Okay, so now I can do in my creasing, okay, I can do a crease by PJ. So our polygroup or <laughs> Paul Gabriel's if you want. So now I've got creasing where the polygroup is. And you know, I, I took the time to make the polygroups because down the road I could end up using that. I like to take the time now to quickly do it while the polygons are so low. It's not something I have to do. Okay, I don't have to create the polygroups because I could also have done creasing by, if I had all the same polygroup, I could use this crease level tolerance. So I can say, let's put it to 45 degrees and hit crease and you can see all those same edges got the creasing. Right, there's, no, there's nothing different there, right? So, but I wanted to have the polygrouping because down the line, I know I'm gonna probably end up using this. So let's go ahead and throw our dynamic on and see what we get. Okay, you can see we have this. All right, let's drop our crease level to two and let's throw that dynamic subdiv up to four and then this is what we're getting. So let's see maybe if I crease this complete edge, do I get a little bit more shape there? Yeah, okay. And then now it's really rounded. So maybe for this particular piece, because I'm so low, I want to go to maybe crease level three and let's see what that is. So there, that's giving me more of the shape I would want. That's more what I'm looking for. And if I want to play with this even more, I can go to four and then let's try smooth level five and then there. So now I'm really getting that sharp, harsh shape. Okay, that maybe I was looking for. And then now, if I want to continue playing with this and cleaning this up even more and manipulating some of these polygons, okay, I'm not in perspective mode. I have found using the clip brush is really great to say, hey, let's make these all along the same plane there. Let's make these all along the same plane along the top. Let's make sure, let's add a little angle there. Mm, I don't like that. Okay, but let's definitely make sure the bottom is nice and straight. Let's make sure that front is straight. There we go. And I'm going to make sure this line right here is perfectly straight. So I'm cleaning up a little bit of things that maybe I want to change. And say here, I'm going to make sure that is perfectly straight there. Right? And then there you have it. Now, I can see there's some still, I'm not happy with this. It's not symmetrical looking straight on it, right? You don't see that symmetry looking straight on it. So again, I'm just trying to show you guys techniques that I do to clean up low polygons and things that I like to do to create stuff, okay? So I wanna solve this problem. You can see that it's not perfectly symmetrical on either side here when you're looking straight at it. So what I'm gonna do is I have local sim on, Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete symmetry along the X. So all I get is one. Okay, that's all I get is the one. Right, and then now I'm going to do a mirror weld along the X. And you can see now that shapes. So this is what I had before. This is what I have now. So now I've got a perfectly symmetrical piece. And when I do that mirror weld, it's going to the middle. So what's giving me that advantage again is this L sim button. So even though this piece is sitting somewhere else in space, I'm telling it to pay attention to the local symmetry of this mesh. And now I have, no matter where I'm looking, I've got the same thing. And then now I'm in symmetry mode and I can even play with this and say, let's make them both to be straight like that. And I can clean up very fast my piece like this and see really what I want. And then boom, there you go. There's that piece the way I want it to be um, for this particular mech. So I'm just using some clip brushes to do some adjustments. And then I'm using mirror and weld with the L sim, right? If I come out of L sim and hit mirror and weld, I now get the other side. And now I am symmetrical again here. And I can say, oh, I don't want that now in the middle. Bada bing, there's my piece. So if we go back now and turn on the rest of the piece, here's what I have. Right? And then now I'm so low in polygon, right? It's super easy for me to do some adjustments now. I can say, let's pull that up a little bit more like that. And I want this edge here, okay? I'm talking about this edge right here. I wanna move it more forward. So I'm holding control and, sp and the Alt key. So what that does is unmasks anything that's in the box 
okay, and keeps everything else masked. This was added to 4R8, and when we added it again, when we added this, I was like, eh, that's cool. It was really added for the deformers. But I tell you now, man, I find myself always when I'm masking, holding down that control and alt piece every single time, all the time. I don't know what it is. I just, uh, uh, I'm doing it, okay? So now I can say, let's turn this off and then play with this edging. And now I'm just playing with the design a little bit more. And I got to decide, do I want this edge to, to be... Uh, in essence, parallel here, or do I want to go past? What would look better for my design to come further in or have it to be right around there? Right, and then there you go. So I would go through now and start cleaning up all these pieces of geometry. Okay, so I can get super clean like that. And this is going to allow me to start doing other things down the road. Okay? So even to the point where, hey, maybe let's add some kind of little scribe line down the middle. Here's a way that maybe I would do it. Let's let's delete symmetrically. So I'm only working with this. All right. Let's look at just this piece. And then let's go with uh, turning on our gizmo. We'll center it. We'll make sure it's reset to be perfect like that. We'll go to the gear and let's do a multi-slice. Okay, so now I got a multi-slice here, okay? So I got to figure out what I want resolution-wise and then how essence wide do I want that to be, right? And then the benefit here is I can add more resolution, less resolution. So I'm just going to do this. I can off-center it a little bit if I want design-wise and then say, let's go about there. I kind of like that. It's something different. It's not all the same. I'm going to say perfect. I hit the W key there, so you guys can either hit the gear, and I can go back to my multi slice. So I hit the gear and go to my gizmo. But if I hit the W key, I can swip be switch between the deformer and the gizmo. So I'm going to say, yes, accept that. Accept. Go back to my Z modeler, and with Q mesh, I'm going to say along the poly loop and then push it in. You know, make a different poly group so it stands out a little bit more. And then there you have a scribe line that's a little off-centered, adding some a design element. And then now I just mirror and weld it over and I got it on the other side. Done. Right, so just some thoughts here, some processes here. So another way that I, I like to work, okay, let's look at these pieces. These are gonna be, obviously missile coming off and then it's going to be able to be rotated and moved up so he can go to different heights and you know this guy I'm, I'm designing him the thought process he's not uh, so if you think I'm thinking military wise there's there's things that I want to make if I have a base I want to protect the base and then I want to make things that go attack maybe so this particular guy my whole design is wrapped around this guy is stationary at the home base of the military that I'm making and I want it to protect so he, all the stuff I'm making for him is really thinking about he doesn't need to be very fast and extremely mobile because he's staying close to home and all the things I'm putting on him is about protecting the home base so these are longer range missiles so you get things off and just because we're talking about design element stuff right that's why i gave him a gatling gun so for people if they get close he's got a gun then he's got a couple more missiles here and then this i'm making this be uh landmines so he would uh fly in because these are going to be jet packs here and same thing here, I'll probably put a jet pack and those are jet packs here and then this is also going to be jet so he can kind of hover in and land and then on the feet he's going to have things that pop out and he can dig into the ground. Uh, so that's kind of where the design element I'm going with this. So let's take a look at how I would take these and create this. So this is just pretty much a rectangle, right? So I'm not going to bother splitting this off. I'm just going to go, let's just make a new piece, period. Okay, so I'm going to append the star, okay? And I only want to look at the star. That's the only thing I'm going to look at. And let's start creating that shoulder piece and everything and the techniques I would do, okay? So here we go. 
I'm just going to switch to the gizmo. I'm going to say, give me a cube. All right. I now have this capability to adjust this cube, and I'm going to say I want it to be six sides. So I'm just using this primitive. We talked about this the last stream we did. So in the previous episode with us, we talked about this as well. But if you guys have questions, right, keep them coming. Um, oh, I just saw uh, Pengil. Oh, critiques? Do I give critiques? Uh, if you want, sure. If you want to send something in to streaming at pixelogic.com, um, I could do some critiques for you if you guys really want that. Sure. I can pick oh, a person or two every time I stream and critique their work, and that'll help you guys see my mind process, my mind process, my English today, not so good. <laughs> um, the, the process that I would think of how maybe building the piece or the direction I go. Okay. Right, so <clears throat> I'm going to say, let's go ahead. That's good. That's what I want. It needs to be a rectangle. So I'm going to say, mm, that's, that's good there. Okay, that's what I want for the piece. And now let's start designing some elements here. So <clears throat> let's, let's first look at what do I want this to have on it. I actually want this to have kind of like a flat edging here. So what I mean by that, if I was to, let's say, insert a point here and insert it here and then get rid of this, I want that. Okay. So I would want it on all four sides. Right. So obviously I have symmetry capability. Okay, when you have something this low, I need to make a symmetrical point of interest. So I'm going to mirror and weld over, so now I've got symmetry. So as I do it on this side, right, I'm going to get it on that side as well. Okay, and then now if I switch to mirror and weld along the Y, I can get it there. And then now I can get rid of these points. I have all the same avenue, and now i got something that looks like, oops, Something that looks like that, right? Because I want to have kind of that look. I don't want to be a perfect cube, okay? So this is one way of me just using symmetry and mirror and welding to do it, okay? So the other way I could go about doing this, and we'll revert back to this, is use dynamic subdiv, right? This is also why we created this. It really opens up a lot of things, okay? Um, I have gone over, um, so when you say modifiers, are you talking about the deformers, vertigo, is that what you're talking about? Because we did also deformers the last stream as well. But from here on out, guys, we'll keep hitting them up and hitting them up. So right now I'm just building based upon what I'm doing. I'm showing you guys different techniques to get to the result. Okay, because you never know what one's going to work. All right, so that last one worked fine. But I can throw dynamic on him. Boom! Yes! An elongated sphere. It's what I've always wanted for Christmas. Okay, that's obviously not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to come here and actually I'm going to turn off the smooth subdiv and I'm going to turn the Q grid on and I'm going to put it at 1. And you're going to be like, okay, well, what is that doing? What that's doing is automatically adding a bevel and I'm keeping it constant so I can just do this. Right, and you can see it's doing pretty much the same thing, but it's beveling every single edge. So I'm also getting this bevel out in the back and this bevel in the front, right? So it's adding edge loops to make these bevels happen. So every time I turn this up, you can see it's very faint. Let's see if you guys can see it in here. There are added edges here, right? So this has been an added edge. You got an added edge here, and then there's another one there. So we're adding edge loops around, okay? And let's see, I'm just looking at the stream. It's going to be tough for you guys to see in the stream until I do this. I say apply, and then you'll see the edge loops that are popping into place. 
Okay, so the reason why there's multiple grids, because if I don't want to do a bevel, I want to do a chamfer, right? I can have now more of a, a rounded, right, a rounded corner compared to a bevel flat corner, right? And I can combine them and have both a little bit. Okay, so if I'm doing just a bevel, I find grid one is enough for me. Right, and I say, there you go, I like that, hit apply, and now I've got this geometry. Okay, but we've got, see, there are also the bevels happening there. Right, so this is where, again, you could just simply use the clip if I wanted to and flatten each side. Right, and now I got all this. But if you look at the first workflow, I had less geometry. Okay, but I had triangles here, and I don't here. I have all quadded here, right? So if we go back, let's let's actually compare. Let's let's do let's do a duplicate. Okay, so let's there's that one, and let's go backwards again. Transform it to. Okay, so again, the other workflow that I was doing, right, was making a center point first with the mirror and weld, and I'm going to say along the X. Okay, and then now when I insert, those are identical, right, and then now I insert here. Okay, and then now I do a mirror and weld along the Y, and now I have this, right, and then now it's just about me deleting, and now I have whoops that look now I have this okay so let's look at the difference here All right so let's turn this one on and let's move this over and now you can see the difference that we have so let's mirror these down or merge them down I should say not mirror and then now we can look at the difference Right, so you can see the amount of polygons over here compared to this one. And really which one. So this this angle here, I can make it just as wide there. Again, what's controlling that is in the dynamic, you have a coverage here. So when you turn this on, right, I have a coverage to mess with this. And you see that I'm even adding more span, so it softens it. Okay, so there's your two workflows for this. Yeah, making sounds while you do something with your workflow, absolutely. You can't, um, so the question is, no. Um, let me go backwards. Um, here, let's, let's delete this one. Right, and let's only keep this one. And let's do a Let's do a delete hidden, okay? So the question's asking, when you turn dynamic on the grid, can you control what edges get the bevel? No, every single edge gets the bevel, right? So it's really mostly beneficial if you're not gonna have any rounded items, right? Because the minute if, say, I inserted a cylinder, let's say, right? It's, it's every edge is getting bevel, so it's gonna show it faceted. Right, so this is why that other key workflow that I'm doing with my creasing and smooth dynamic becomes really important to me. Right, so if I turn off smooth, this is what I would get. Right, it's very faceted. Okay, so this is why you got to know well what would be the best approach. Now, with that said, you guys can do something like this. So let's say I'm going to say let's go back to Z modeler and let's switch to creasing. And let's just do a single edge. And let's say I crease this, crease this, increase that, increase that. Okay, and I, you know what? Let's crease these two just for good. Let's see what's going to happen. So what I can do, increasing has a bevel. Okay, so I'm going to say proportional width. Okay, I'm going to bevel it. And then I can play with the result. The resolution, so it's the same thing that I'm doing up there in dynamic, but this is actually physically happening. And then I can play with my width and watch things change. So you can use either creasing, okay, to control. So the downfall to this is 
any edge does that crease. So if I kept creasing all these edges, right, down the line, when I hit the bevel, they all get it. Okay, now, if I want to have a little bit more control here, okay, which I'm, uh, help, I would want to have more control, in the modeler, in the modeler brush, okay, hover over crease and say add to curve, okay, what do I, what do I, what do I need to help, I will laugh, oh, this is a, uh, you're sending something in the new tab. Is this uh, okay to show to public? Reclusive? Like in the stream? What I just, you sent me that I opened? Kreath? Okay, so I'll wait to respond um, there. So the other way to control beveling is switch to this add edge to curve okay so when you click you're getting something that looks somewhat familiar probably okay this is not symmetrical so you do have to take the time to pick what edges you want so all I'm doing is deciding what edges do I want to have a bevel okay and then when I hover over you see it says delete curve if you hold spacebar you can see you can do bevel and then you have all the exact same controls and then now what you do is you now just click and it bevels all of them. So there is multiple ways to bevel with inside ZBrush. Okay? So if I don't like these bevels, I go to the stroke, okay, and then I say curve functions and delete and then they're gone. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. Okay, this is actually the look I want, and I want to now say creasing. Okay? So I'm going to say, let's play with some polygroup in here. So I'm going to say polygroup. I'm going to say flat island. I want that to be its own polygroup. I want that to be its own and change the color. And let's change the color of this, 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 this to be all the same. So now I have various polygroups. Okay. I'm now going to just say crease by PG. And I got all the creasing I want. I'm going to turn on my dynamic. And I'm going to say smooth. And let's do my go-to I really like is this. And now I've got something more like that. Is that what I want for this piece? Do I want to add more geometry to hold it or maybe just change my crease levels and say maybe crease level 3 might look a little bit better. It's getting there. It's not bad. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Okay. So now I kind of got a nice little edge growing. And now I want to start building this up and doing more items to this. Okay, so... <laughs> Chanel, never mind. That is hysterical. <laughs> Did you just make that? Or has this been out there for a while? It's got 27 views. <laughs> I love it. That's hysterical. Parfum. <laughs> Uh, that's hysterical. <laughs> I should Facebook that and let my wife see it. She would get a kick out of that one. That's awesome. I love it. Oh, I'm looking at it in my other monitor, so if you people don't see it, here it is. <laughs> Did you make this? I'm assuming you made it because it just uploaded nine minutes ago. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's an old picture. I don't even have these glasses anymore. I lost them in Montreal. <laughs> But now I look. I now I know what it looked like with long hair. <laughs> I love it. I just made it. I love it. Okay, so I want to now continue to designing with this, right? So I'm going to turn this on. You know what? This piece right here. Let's switch to Q mesh single polygon. Okay, and I'm going to rip this off. So holding the control key. Right, and I'm going to say there and give this a little bit of some thickness. That looks great. Okay, this here, I want this now to have its own polygroup. Okay, so knowing that design wise, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, hopefully that wasn't loud for you. Before I do anything, I would say, you know what, this should be its own polygroup. Okay, and then now I can say rip this off. And we'll say we'll change the color and doing this because now what I want to do is create a lip. 
and I'm going to use this poly grouping to create a little bit of a lip like this and then I'm going to use say a poly loop now to put a little bit of a just a little bit of a lip something like that so there's some kind of little edge there and then now there's an inner piece right and so when I smooth this this is what I'm getting so let's just quickly throw the crease by PG's on there okay now you can see what I'm getting now so far right so I'm gonna say all right I definitely want these to be creased so I'm gonna do a crease I'm gonna say complete edge loop that perfect right and I didn't turn symmetry on so make my life easier so I have to click so many times and say okay well, what am I looking at now okay we're getting a lot closer to what I want right so now what I need to do is fix those internal pieces in there okay so I can take the time to do that or I can start playing with this and then there you go so now I have the creased edges where I want them so I just change the tolerance and hit crease and that's giving me what I want everyone follow me on that okay so I want to play a little bit I don't not a huge fan of what's happening in here so you know what can help with this let's throw a little mirror and weld on there yeah I like that already a lot better so that's why I would put that edge loop in there okay but before I do that I want to create some missiles through here okay so I want to show you a very cool technique that I found was very useful for me okay and it's the reason why I made this individual piece because I can even now go to move and I can say island and I can move this piece around because it's not connected in any way shape or form is everyone following me on that right pretty cool right so now I can really position that where I want but I want to start creating different type of geometry for that but you as a user you're gonna be like this you're never gonna know that those were separate pieces they're gonna look like the same piece but I'm gonna mess with this okay so I'm gonna say you know what let's create an inset of this so I'm gonna to go to inset I'm gonna say of one polygon a single polygon I'm gonna come out of dynamic mode so I can really see and say how much and say yeah that's good gives me a nice border along there in essence that's what I'm looking for okay that's what I, that's what I want to have all right so now I want to do some other things with this so there are many techniques and many ways to go about this I can again once again split this off right and so you can see what's on right now is poly loop I just want single polygon. I just want this guy. Here, I'm going to pull it way off so you guys can really see what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to make some thickness here. Okay? And I'm going to crease it. So now it's creased. There. Crease. Okay? And what I want to do is split this. Okay? So I'm going to say insert multiple edge loops will make it interactive let's say maybe something like that and then this way and then now that's what I have okay so for the sake of understanding let's make this all one poly group okay so this is what I have going on here all right and I'm now gonna give this also some little I want to give this a little edge. So let's poly loop this and pull it out a little bit. I'm going to give that a little a little edge. Just some thickness there. Let's look at just this front piece. Okay, so let's make sure this is the only thing I have selected. So you can see here I'll turn on display double. So you can see I have more pieces there. I definitely don't want any of these selected. So this is all I want. And all I'm going to do is say, let's do polygrouping, let's do um, all polygons, and let's do a checkered. And then boom, there I have a checkered. Right, so now I have that pattern. So why do I care about this? This is going to allow me to even in the back, right, the same, if I want the same thing in the back and the front, right, 
so I can start playing with this pattern and this idea of what I want to make. Okay, so I want to start manipulating and playing with this. Okay, and what I'm going to do is say how many missiles are going to be. Right, so now I can just Q mesh this through with a single polygon, and I'm making that missiles where they would sit. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's go on an angle. So I'm going to say this one, this one, and let's not have symmetry on. So I'm going to say this one, that one, let's go maybe there, there, and there. Maybe that's the number of missiles that I'm going to have in this launcher. Okay, and I'm going to do one quick thing. I'm going to actually break these off so I have them. Right, and then I'm going to say polygroup all and give it some thickness. Okay, so you can start even having things like this happening. Okay, there's a lot of ways to go about this. I'm building up because what I want to do, okay, what I really want to do is I want to take the time, right, and go through here and then just push through which ones I want. But you can see what you're getting here. I'm actually creating a very weird looking result. So when I smooth this, it's not really what I want. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I do anything, I'm going to come in through here and say I want them to be in this area. And then I'm going to say inset, right? And then create another inset here. Right? And then and now I can say I can have stuff like this. Right? And then now they're not connected. There's actually a gap that's in there that's happening. Okay? So whatever I do here, right? You have to remember you got to do in the back. Right, so all I would do is do the same coverage here in the back. Right, so I'm doing one, two, three, four, five rows. One, two, three, four, five rows, right? So you can see I need to make sure that this stays identical on either side. Right, and then now when I inset, right, I'm getting it on both sides. That's going to be important because, again, I'm going to, my goal here is to Q mesh these in so it creates that. Look, and then I can now do this, right? And then I can go and do this, and then go do the next ones, and then the next ones, right? And then when I smooth, those become round, right? So this is a way of just using Z Modeler to do it. Obviously, now with Live Boolean, I could also just use Live Boolean and call it a day. But when you go to convert, that live boolean, you're going to have all the triangles. This technique, I'm still keeping very low, quadded, right, pieces, and I can play and say, oh, I want to add now one there. Or maybe I want them to just be all over the place here. Right? And then now I have maybe that type of pattern happening. It's up to you. Like, it's up to us, right, what we want to do. Okay? And then the beauty here is if I pull one of these off, Right? And then start doing, say, something like this. This is also going to round. Okay? So, I'm creating the missile in this sense. So, we'll say crease. We'll say, let's crease. Uh, let's do the face crease. Let's crease and let's just crease that face. And we'll crease that face. So, when I turn this on, see, I get the rounded shape that would fit in there. No problem, right? And then now I can start creating and saying, all right, it's going to come out like that. Let's do a little edge there and then do this. And then now let's scale this down, right? So I can switch to scale, okay? And I can say polygon center and then scale that down, right? And then I'm going to add an edge loop here. All right, and then I'm going to get rid of the creasing on this. And then there you go. It's got a little rounded shape to it. And you know what? Let's add another edge loop here. All right, and I'm going to switch to single edge loop. So I can decide really how close that is. Let's say right there. 
and then let's do a poly loop Q mesh, not a scale, but a Q mesh. So I want this face, I'm going to bring it in. So I just start creating some other design elements here, right? And I'm going to say, all right, with, do you want this edge? So I'm going to say, you know what? I want another edge there and we'll Q mesh this in it as well. And then look at that. So in essence, that's, that's, that's kind of the, the warhead that I'm starting to make, right? And then now this, I know, right, will fit, okay, in every one of these pieces. Right, so now if I move this around, right, it's going to fit because it's coming from the same geometry. No problem. Right, so I would do all that at, at the same time. Right, so this is this is in essence my goal. So now I could start creating a design of really where am I trying to go with this thing and what is it going to look like. Right, I can start doing things like that. Right, and then I can continue that down the line. All right, so it's just ideas, but again. Live Boolean will give you that, but the goal here was I was trying to keep the geometry as low as I can. And now I just start having some fun with my design here. I insert an edge loop and say from there maybe, and then we'll Q mesh poly loop this out. So it creates kind of like a back like that. Oh, looks like I need to add some creasing here. So add some, what does that look like? So we'll crease that edge. Yeah, that looks good. And then maybe I will crease that edge. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Make sure those are creased the way I want them. Right, and then now this has got a large portion on the back. But it still has this pattern because I'm building it off what's already existing there. Right, so then we just keep going with this and then we just start doing whatever we want. You know, this poly loop this out and then crease those edges that I want creased. And then now that's got that part. And now I can start making some insert and saying, let's go to my insert mesh brushes and let's go model kit. And then let's start adding some other elements on here. So here I'm gonna maybe, here, here's a nice little thing that looked like a button me or like a, a button to press down on for it. And then let's make a couple of those. Right, and what I want to make them equidistant, so I'm going to turn on the pin and then hit the one key so it's equidistant. And that's just some kind of little other design element that goes in the back. And see, now you start building on this. So but the thing I want to understand here, if we remember what we're looking at, okay, we're looking at this mech, and now I just got to start breaking down the pieces and start building them and putting him together. And in many of these cases, I would build right where it's sitting in space, right? Probably not this because I'd want to take it back, take advantage of symmetry. And because it's kind of on an angle this way, right? I would maybe want to take symmetry because if I want this back and this front to be the same, I'd probably want to maintain that as much as I can as symmetrical point. Okay. So unfortunately I got to get going here for a meeting soon. But before I go, I want to see if there's any questions that you might have. I can't go the marathon two hours like I normally do. So let me go through the questions here. Hold on, I'm just catching up with your guys' questions. <coughs> Uh, you're talking about noises, using noises, uh, surface noise to push and pull. Okay, I know your risk card would especially be a future discount. Zebra's Core, if you have Zebra's Core, yeah, you can get Zebra's 4R8. Um, you get $100 off if you already own Core. Then as long as you qualify, you get $100 off.
Uh, the people to stay within zebras without having to jump in any extra. Okay, so I see you guys are just, you guys are answering each other's questions. So you know I'm gonna keep working on this, and you know what? As we go along here, I'll keep adding the pieces, and we can keep talking about the techniques that I'm using to do all this stuff. In right, and then I'll get us to, and you'll see the the idea and the workflow that I'm trying to create with this guy. And I want to try and keep as much freedom as I can. Like right now, I'm not, the head is just a placeholder. I'm not happy with the head. So I'm probably going to figure that out. You know, I'd probably want it to be a little bit wider in the back. I don't like what's happening here. But then this is the beauty, right, of this workflow. I can look at just this piece and go, mm, let's look at just this, right? And let's do something maybe like that and switch to even, let's reset this. All right, let's reset that. Let's center it, go here, and then throw taper on this. And now it's on this piece right here. And then maybe I can play with the tapering and I can have it be sharper or wider. And let ZBrush do some of the work for me and say, ah, does that look better or not? Use some of these used deformers. Ooh. Let's see, it's interesting. Let's put it on the other side too. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Right? So that do I like the head looking like that? Right? And then because this is Dynamesh, right, I can still continue to manipulate this. So I can say, well, what if I just widen it? a certain way, right, and say, mm, let's soften it up and wind it maybe that way, or maybe I want to go a little bit longer, right, and then I'm manipulating this, but it's still part of the same subtool because it's different poly groups, I have more flexibility and freedom to really see, is that what I want? And then if I want to redynamesh, I can redynamesh, right, and it's going to clean up the geometry for me. So any of the stretching that I did, it's all taken care of for me, right? So this is what I had before, this is what I have now. And because I have the groups option on, I know it's not welding. So I'm not welding to that green piece in the back. And see, now I need to redesign this if this is really the head I'm gonna go with. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this. And right now, you're looking at this piece, right? If we look at this, uh, how's he gonna turn his head, right? So his mobility is this. Is that enough? Turning left and right, right? And then up and down, he's really got nothing right now because there's collision there and collision already in the back happening, right? So then I would figure that out. If I'm changing the design of the head, that's what I would do. Okay, so that's actually would probably be my first step of this because I don't, looking at this, I don't like the head. So I'd probably figure out a bunch of different designs for the head and then make update my design based upon the the new head design that I like. Question a subtool turn is semi transparent with lines across it. I have no idea. Yeah, that's taken care of now in P2. So what you've done is you've activated. So there's a new feature. So if I turn everything on. All right, let's see that actually looks pretty cool right there too. Um, if I go into gizmo mode, see this last one right here? This is allowing you guys to select multiple subtools. So I can say this subtool and this subtool, I want them to rotate and move together, but not the other subtools. So I'm assuming this is what you ran into. So if you download P2 and you get P2, the minute you guys come out of that, we'll clear it. In P1, it doesn't do that. So in P1, you would have to clear it. So you'd have to click and drag, and then that clears it. And what we're using, in essence, is the selection. So the same thing you guys do for select. I'm holding down Control Shift, and I'm tapping on the pieces that I want to be part of this movement or this rotation or anything I want to do. And then I can inverse it, right, and clear it. So if I say, let's do this and this, tapping, holding Control Shift and tapping, we'll reverse it. Holding Control Shift and click and dragging, in essence, clears it. But even if you don't forget to, if you forget to clear it in P2 now, for a P2, when you turn this mode off, we're turning it off for you automatically. 
Okay, so that's probably what you ran into, Lark Arts. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Shapes. Uh, well, this is uh, going to be mostly full heart surface model, Bill. And I'm planning to also 3D print this out and turning it into like a model kit that eventually maybe even sell and you guys could buy it and build it yourselves. Um, I want to go through that whole process of building all, like an actual model kit. Like if you went and bought a Gundam model, right? So my goal is to do something, which I got this idea when we did like five years ago or six years ago when we did four or four. Um, let's see. Model kit sheets. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys where I'm, I'm hoping to go with this. Right, I'm hoping to do this kind of stuff where I'm going to do all this in ZBrush and then build this out and then manufacture it and you can actually build it and paint it and do whatever you want. So I got this idea years ago. I want to say it was ZBrush 4R4. We use something that I did which ships with ZBrush this. Yeah. So I made all of this in ZBrush, the box, painted it, damaged it. So I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to actually do that in ZBrush in real life. So how many ever years ago this was, six years ago or something, that's where I got the initial thought. I'm like, oh, I want to try this. So I'm a, I've been on a mech kick for years now, and so that's my goal. All right, uh, let's see. So let me just make sure I didn't miss any other questions. Anything else I missed before we call it a stream? Again, thanks for joining me today. I won't be back until September. Um, I'm on vacation uh, for the rest of August. Okay, so I will not be here. But you'll still have Joseph Drust and Solomon Goes this Thursday. Um, and then tonight evening, you got um, Shane Olson. Don't also forget about all the Summit stuff that we just released. We updated the Summit pages. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure you head over there, especially if you guys are going to physically come, introduce yourself, number one, come say hi. And if you want to take advantage of these workshops, see, just in this stream alone, we already sold another workshop for Shane here. Someone bought another also hard surface weapon one from Michael Clymer. So these are workshops that we're doing only physically here. These are the only things that are not streamed live anywhere. But everything else is the sculpt off with the contestants. That'll be streamed on Thursday, okay, October 5th. And then also the presentations will all be streamed the 6th through the 8th. Cool. Stream from the beach, that's a good idea the sun for sure okay everybody I'm going to call it a stream thanks for tuning in enjoy the rest of August and hopefully for those that are here coming for the summit it's right around the corner it's literally a month and a half and away can't wait to see you got a great set of a list of presenters and artists and don't forget Shane Olson is coming on tonight um, I believe seven o'clock yes seven o'clock is Shane Olson tonight so it's a great great guy does some amazing work and it's very stylized great stuff thanks everybody have a wonderful rest of the week and weekend bye bye